Now, what's not nice about this map from our point of view is that in the systems that we have been studying, we have never encountered this thing. You know, I mean, okay, you flip a coin, but we're interested in dynamics. You know, things get stretched and folded, as we saw in Rosslare. And so the maps that we actually saw were of different structure, and they're called unimodal maps. And the simplest example that we will now study is called... And the reason why we will find it very sweet is that topologically... And by unimodal maps, so We'll study this, it'll look very contrived, but it turns out that once you understand dynamics of this linear map, you understand topology of any map on the interval, which is called unimodal, a map with one hump. So any map that stretches the unit interval and folds it and puts it back in place. And that's a vast collection of interesting dynamical systems, of which Rosslayer that we studied as an example is the simplest case. So now what happens in that map is that the branch looks like this, the right branch. So now we have a left branch. If you start with a point in your state space, which in this case is just a unit interval, at time n, you have a law of motion that says gamma n plus 1. And this is a sketch of this map for Unimodal, and this is a sketch for Bernoulli. Now, clearly the two axes are equivalent because I'm mapping state space on the state space, and clearly I'm very lucky because this is the last time I'm able to map both initial state space and final on one blackboard because anything, if I had two dimensions to start with and two dimensions by another, then I had to draw a uh, two by two graph or four dimensional graph which I can draw. This diagonal means the following thing. Suppose I programmed my pocket calculator, if anybody has those. This is engineering school, they might still, you know, they might still have slide rules, what do I know? So if I program it, the function will produce a number in the screen. So if I program it, it'll give me this value. Now I say, let me use that value as the initial input for the next program, for the next step of the same program. That I do by reflecting this line onto that line across the diagonal. So that's why I'm using this diagonal all the time. So when I draw uh, a two cycle, so now I'll draw a two cycle for this system. See what happens in this system, the fixed point has moved. It's not an upper right corner because nothing there. So this is not a fixed point, which we call one repeated forever. And now it used to be that the two cycle was something that hopped around here in a very symmetric way. It can't do that anymore because the map is not symmetric in that sense. So what I have to do is I have to start someplace here uh, so that means I took some value, evaluated it, and I'm using that as initial point for the calculation, and I evaluate it again. Then I take it again as initial point, which means I reflect it on this axis. And I find the two cycle. Now when you do this for a while, it gets complicated, so people describe this as cobweb diagrams. It'll look like lots of stuff, but that's just a standard construction in one dimension. I need something that starts on the left, ends on the right, comes back, and it has to be kind of aligned on this diagonal. Sure. And you know, that's the only thing actually when you look about it. Well, it's very easy for us because it'll turn out you give me sequence zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and I compute this point. 
I don't have to guess where they are. I can compute them. And this point is called gamma 0, 1. And this point is called gamma 1, 0. And by that mean, these are values are down here on the unit interval. It gets very crowded down here. So that's the tenth map, and I'll use different letter. And now it has two branches. But, but I can also write this map e to the minus 2 times gamma minus 1 half. And that means when gamma is down here, that's a fixed point because 2 times 1 half minus 1 is 0. And then the thing is increased linearly. When gamma is 1 half, I'm up here. And then as I make it a little bit bigger, uh, you know, it would like to go up here, but I'm using the absolute value, so it switches down and goes down. So that's one way to write this map. It's in form, it's close to a known map and stuff like that. Instead of using x squared, I'm using the absolute value. You can write it any way you want. And again, we have the st state space gamma is element of M, which is just a unit interval. Again, we have a critical point. Now, you know, this one doesn't look so sick because it has a value 1, but its derivative is not defined because it switches slope. So it is, again, a critical point. And now the time itinerary is very simple. You just give me an initial value of gamma, and I evaluate this, and I tell you, is it on left or right? <coughs> then I'll look at the value of one iterat, and I'll decide whether it's on left and right, and that'll be symbolic dynamics. So itinerary will be what we defined last time, the future itinerary of gamma. It's just a set of values off to infinity, where the rule is Sn can take three values. It can be the one, or it can be critical point, or it can be zero. So I'll use three symbols. And it gets value if Gn is larger than one half. This is if Gn equals one half. That's the critical point, and this is if Gn minus, smaller than one half. So you give me gamma, and I just stick it into this machine, and I crunch out the sequence, so I know what the itinerary is. Let's look at the pre-images of critical point to see where we can partition, again, the space into smaller and smaller regions. So that should work like a charm. Here is my critical point, and it has two values. So this one I obtained by f minus 1, uh, the zero branch of my map of critical point 1 half. And this one I obtained by taking the other branch. And they sit in the same place they used to sit. And obviously, each one of them will have its two pre-images, et cetera. So this is just going to work. It's going to get sliced again. So now I look at what are the labels here. So this looks good. This is just like before. You know, I started in 0, 0. I stayed in 0. This is good. I started on the left-hand side. That's the 0 thing. But in one iterate, I'll end up on the right-hand side. Then I say, uh, this guy, you know, I do my binary thing, and I realize, wait a minute, this fixed point, gamma 1, should have form 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, in my symbolic dynamics. So in my symbolic dynamics, this should be 1, 1, and this should be 1, 0. Forever. Well, that's the whole point of this lecture. It turns out 
That's not one. <laughs> That's just symbolic time sequence in time. At first, I gave you an easy and misleading thing that every undergraduate book in dynamical systems starts and stops with. It says, you know, chaos is like causing toin, and there is Bernoulli map, and then you miss the whole point of the exercise. Now I'm taking a totally simple thing. Instead of taking this piece of paper, stretching it, cutting it, and putting it top of each other, I say, well, I'll stretch it and then I'll fold it, which is what we do with when we make Danish pastry. You got it. See, there is a reason to teach on a blackboard. The light goes on at some point. OK, so something is amiss. Oops. At this point, a fundamental theorem of combinatorics due to two novelists at Hoft and Weltmann comes in. And the theorem says combinatorics is impossible to explain. So now what will happen is I'll explain this and you'll be annoyed. Then you'll go into some dark room and if you think about it, you'll figure it out yourself and say, you know, why did this person tell me this? Because it's totally obvious. If you do this, you do that. And that's the result. And then you'll try to explain it to the next person and that person will be also annoyed until they go to the dark room and they think it through. So what I'll do is now I'll state the result and maybe we'll be able to... If you have initial point, gamma, then it's totally straightforward to produce its symbolic dynamics itinerary. Just by keeping track where you landed on the left, the right branch of the map. There's nothing to it. However, what we need is we need a value of gamma given the time sequence. I give you an itinerary, I say I have a two cycle, I'll this fixed point. Where is it? You know, I want to do left, 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 left. Where is it? One, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Where are these points? So what I really need to compute is gamma as a function of a given sequence. Because this is all in powers of 2 and slope 2, etc., it's natural to use the binary basis to express that number. And that I'll call 0. It's in unit interval. And it has values omega 1, omega 2, or w, I forget. I think w. So if I know the time sequence, do I know where I'm in spatial space? The answer is the next symbol is given by it's same as the preceding if next symbol in this top list is zero, so it's on the left. But it's 1 minus omega n if Sn plus 1 is on the right side. And why did that happen? See, this thing is the left interval flipped. So whenever you land on this side, you reverse the order of neighbors. So here, if two points were ordered with respect to each other, and after one iteration, they're still ordered. It's just that distance has uh, increased by two. But if these points are on that side, then after one iteration, this one has a higher value than the other one. So left one becomes right, and right one becomes left. And that's encoded by omega is either 0 or 1. So if you're on the left hand side, you just keep the same ordering as you had. But if you're on the right hand side, then you know, convenient to write, the way to write is 1 minus the symbol. So if the symbol was 1, there'll be 0. And if the symbol was 0, there'll be 1. So the reverse the row. So that's the law. Yeah, so this is itinerary. Itinerary said I. Uh, 
mark the partition of the state space I visited. And the partition is that there is uh, M0 on this side and M1. So that's a symbol of, of the partition. Um, so I'm just visiting different partitions. Okay, yeah, it's a name of the partition. So I could have called them left and right. It's just that, you know, in this case, binary is so easy to compute that you prefer to do it in binary. But, but it's really a symbol. It's not a position. It's a symbol. It says I've been here, and then I go to interaction zone. I come back and come back interaction zone, something like that. So just a label. But omegas are seriously meant to be numbers. These are binary digits in a number gamma. And now you can do the same story as before. Gamma is a binary number, so it has a continuum of values, but in binary basis, uh, each digit has two values, 0 or 1. I had to initialize this, omega 1 equals s1. So in the beginning, you know, I don't know what's... But next time I can get folded. So this is the initial value, and then it's, this uh, algorithm is totally straightforward. Now in the book, I also do it pictorially. You can draw a binary tree, and then you can see that this is sort of alternating binary tree, where depending what kind of branches the tree has. So it depends, you know, how you want to understand it. But as an algorithm, it's all true. It's still true that there are exercise, there are these kind of things. But now, what we have here, we have to compute gamma, whose forward itinerary is this thing. So there's a computation to go from the forward itinerary saying I'm on left, I'm on left, I'm on left. In that case, they all coincide. But on the right, you can see that on the right, you end up on something that sits here rather than the far end. So one, 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 one is not one. It'll be two thirds or something. I can't even remember, two fifths or something. You'll be able to compute them all by hand. So as exercises, they're very simple exercises. Then gamma 1 will be something whose forward itinerary, and then there'll be some number that you compute in terms of these Ws. Same thing with the cycle. So now you, you, know, you understand that you understand that time and space are different. But if you know a time sequence for these dynamical systems, you know exactly where you end up. And if you know the, where you started, you know exactly the time sequence. So you can go both ways. In particular, it's still true that if gamma equals is left to the, of the beta, but that doesn't mean that the time sequences of binary numbers are ordered that way just means I can still order things on the time, but the time sequence of these two guys is non-trivial. It's not that written this as a binary number. The forward itinerary as zero, you know, zeros and ones is to the left of that forward itinerary. I have to do a calculation. For us, it will be easy to enumerate all solutions using symbolic dynamics. So, you know, I will ask you, can you tell me how many periodic orbits you have of length 5? And you'll think about a little bit, and you'll give me all the sequences which, which are distinct up to cyclic permutation. So you, you'll find out that, you know, there's, I forget, three periodic orbits of length 5, or maybe 7, or I forget the number. It's a simple number. Okay, I have them. My formula is like periodic orbits. It'll turn out in the second part of this course. So I have those. Are they there? Are they allowed? You know, am I guaranteed that you give me any sequence and that is allowed? And that's where this ordering in space comes in. As you will see very quickly, I will work it out on the simplest example.